Welcome back Watch People. So last week it was Geneva, this week it's Radlett and we are here at the latest BQ Watch event. And as usual, you guys are coming with me. I'm gonna take you inside, have a little look around and let's explore some of the wonderful independent manufacturers that are here for us to look at today. So I am with a very, very, very good friend of mine. It is Matt from NDC. How you doing, mate? Very well, thank you. Very now, pleased to be here. Now, I see you've along the glamour today, the important <laughs> ones. Introduce yourself, girls. I'm Tia. I'm Kiara. Matt, you, you, they must have a good-looking mum. That's all I can tell. <laughs> Thankfully, they get the looks from their mum. They do, yes. Now, Matt, you know that uh, I'm a massive fan of NDC. Thank you. Uh, for those watching that... Uh, haven't yet come across what you do, is your chance, show them what you got. So, um, in the 60s and 70s, the French marine national divers used to just, just get given their watch heads only. So some of them used to cut off this elastic from their reserve parachute cases um, and um, stitch them together and stretch them over their wetsuits. Like NDC straps took it a step further and used the hooks from the parachute and the rectangular part and made it into more of a watch strap. And the material is only mil spec material from the original factory in France that made it in the 60s and 70s. I love the finish in this. The jumbo stitching, yeah. It's just so cool. Yeah, we do want some logos. Now I wear one of these on a tube, the one that uh, I got a few a long time ago, and it, I have to say, it is my. Are we allowed to call them NATO straps? We're not, are we? No, I do make a NATO version, but I don't. You don't. You don't use that term because it's trademark. Yeah, yeah. It's single pass. I call military it. Sta military strap. Military style strap. Military yeah. style strap. Yeah. yeah. Um, it is without a doubt my favourite. Um, what are you giving away here today? Look, what's it? There's some there? stickers, Velcro patches, and there's Velcro pin badges all over the table. People can help themselves too. What, what are people putting these on mostly, Matt? Would you say? So, yeah, like diver watches, Tudor watches, Seiko watches, anything, to be honest. Um, there's even one on, uh, there's a lookbook here, and you'll see, see them on many different types of watches. And what's the cost of these? So the ones with the flags on are 65 pounds, mm -hmm. and the ones, that just the plain ones, are 60. So if anyone wants to purchase one of these, give us your website and your details. So it's ndcstraps.com. Um, have a look on the website. Anyone coming to the show today will get a card for a discount. Um, they can help themselves to that. And if you look at my trusted dealers, Matt is one of those. I guarantee you'll get first class service 
and a first class product. Matt, have a lovely weekend. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for bringing along your girls. See you later, honey. Have a great week. See you soon. Thanks, Paul. See you later, Matt. See you. It's a very fancy watch winder. Very fancy watch winder. Like it Fully aluminium. Uh, you can control the watch winder mechanism with this switch. You control the lights with this switch. Um, the movement is a Swiss cubic movement and you can control that through Bluetooth and you can uh, adjust the different uh, rotations, the direction, everything like that. And then uh, it's powered by two the rotation speed. So if you say for instance have a watch that's um, quite delicate and only needs to go through 50 rotations and only goes clockwise, you can program that, that in. True enough. True enough. Oh, okay. So how do you know whether your watch needs is You can find out, uh, there's lists uh, readily available online. Depending on the movement you find. Sorry? Depending on the movement inside. Depending on the movement, so some movements uh, prefer to be wound in one direction, others can be wound both directions. Oh, okay. um, some, um, you know, sort of more classic watches tend to be about 350, 400 movements um, uh, per day, whereas your sort of standard uh, ETA movements would be about the 650 mark, and then you'll have some other ones that'll even go up to 1,000 mark. Can um, the retail on this, please? Um, in sterling, you'd be looking at around 2150. 2150. Uh, but when we launch it, there's actually going to be a, a launch price okay. and an extra discount. Okay, thank you. So guys, I am at uh, the Atawok stand and uh, I remember these watches from last time. They really do take my eye. I'm going to try one or two on and show you what they look like. I mean, that has a real sort of like MBNF sort of vibe about it. I really like this sort of style and look. There's another one. I mean, what's not to like about these? I think they're actually, for the money, I think they're crazy. £749. I mean, I've just come over from Geneva and anything that looked like that was 30, 40, 50,000 Swiss francs. These are slightly more expensive. This one just around £2,000 sterling. These are now £1,800 sterling. Cool. What's this one? How this much? This is a tarantula. This is £2,000. Brand new release. So this is the new release from Atawok and it is called the tarantula. You can also get them in red strap as well, Paul, white strap. It's and what's the price of this one, Dave? £2,000 sterling. £2,000 sterling. What a look for the money. I have to say that I think, uh, I mean, this again is really got my name all over it. Yeah, you, this strap goes with that as well, Paul, right? Does it? Yeah, yeah I, both, I, prefer it on a, I prefer it on a rubber. You can get that on a red strap if you want, Paul, that. Don't know if I'm getting orange one, Paul, but I'm not getting a custom one. Look at that. It's very easy to turn the time, Paul. Can you turn the time on that? Uh, that's no. the hour marker. So it's five past five. Five past five, yeah, yeah, easy, brilliant, right? yeah. I mean, that is a real rifle. And the price on that one? Uh, 1,800. 1,800, again. Look, I'm not saying the quality is the same, but having just come home from Geneva, I can only repeat, anything that even well, resembles that. 
that's got carbon fiber in that. So I'm wondering how it's all made of carbon fiber. Oh, I really like that. I'm not sure which one I actually like best. There's so many there that I like. I like that one. I like. I think my there is two... a Swiss version of this, but it's eight thousand pounds. Right. My so two, my two favourites, I think, are these two. So which one do you like best, guys? On me, do you think this one or this one? But there's one more contender. It's also very nice, but I think the colour scheme. The blue is probably is probably more me. Again, a great look. Recognise this man anywhere? Hi, Dave. I'm back. How you doing, mate? I'm back. Yeah. Refreshed after a whole Fresh, week. ready to go, mate. Looking nice and tanned. Looking to smash Fish. a few coconuts together, mate. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've got Emil Chorier. Just talking about the, how they're underrated in the UK, but in Asia, they're absolutely huge. For okay.
I wonder who I've got here. You'd never recognise her, would you? Kaylee, what has he been like since I've, he's been back from Geneva? Tell me. What he's he been, been really like? great. He's been great. <laughs> you know what? When you, you know, I can tell when you're lying. You're Why? Move. Probably, yeah. Um, no, he's had a. <coughs> Um, no, he's been fine. He said he had a good time, though. Did, yeah, you, have did. A good, did you have a good time with him? Yeah, it was good, but he did get badly traumatised at Why? breakfast when he realised he had to serve himself. Oh, he, he, no one was serving no for one him? No serve no. So he's not used to that. And he was badly traumatised. Yeah. Honestly, it's boring. Actually, that's when he rang me and went, this place, I need to get out. Yeah, Like, somebody isn't it. serving me breakfast, I've got to go get my own. And I was like, yeah. How are you enjoying today, all right? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's nice good. to see all the different brands here. Exactly. All the familiar faces. Yeah, lovely to see everyone. Yeah. You are now a veteran of YouTube and TikTok. How's things going for you? Good? I mean, I love TikTok. Yeah. Do you? I like it, yeah, it's fun. It's fun, no? It's a little bit different, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you do like normal videos. I do like roasting people at the minute on their watches. You're roasting people? Saying what their watch means. What your watch says about you, and it's not ever anything ever nice. So. Shout out your TikTok channel. At bq.watches. There you go. Get on there, lads. Make sure you follow. Like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Welcome to the Summer Watch Show. Today we've got an exclusive from Elliot Brown, an exclusive launch to BQ Watches. Spencer, you hear that? Exclusive to BQ Watches. One of many, I hope. I hope you're enjoying the show. We've got Guy and we've got Jem from Elliot Brown. The stage is yours. Thank you. So uh, just a bit of a, a brief catch-up to if anyone who doesn't know who we are. Um, we are a, a UK brand, we're based in Cool in Dorset. Uh, we are extreme sports watches that you could wear every day. And the, the watch that we're launching today is our Beachmaster Quartz. Um, so to just give you a little bit of a, a potted history about Beachmaster, this was born out of a conversation with the Marines about two, two and a half years ago, maybe a bit longer than that now, um, about could we create a watch that had both a countdown and counter timer on it simultaneously, something that had not been done before. Uh, and after a bit of uh, working through, we decided we could do it. Uh, very fortunately, we were able to get a, a patent on the watch, and the first, uh, our first launch was our Beachmaster Automatic, uh, which we, uh, we pre-sold from November last year at the Watch Pro Salon, and uh, we had a tremendous response to slightly nervously because uh, our, our current range is between sort of 395 uh, and 800 pounds. Um, this new Beachmaster Automatic was 2,375, so new territory for us. So we were a little unsure as to whether people would say, guys, are you drinking the Kool-Aid? What are you thinking of producing the watch at this price? But actually when we launched it, we had a tremendous re uh, response. Everybody said how fantastic it was and what a lot of watch it was for the money. Um, we sold out immediately uh, when we had delivery in May, we then had a second tranche of, of uh, watches arrive at uh, the beginning of July and, and, and immediately sold out of those two. Uh, so this is our Beachmaster Quartz, it has all the same um, features, um, it uh, still has the same bait clearly, because it's a timing mechanism on it, uh, but it's a, it's a quartz movement. Um, and it, the reason that we've done this is it, it fits slightly more within our normal portfolio of pricing. So uh, we're starting at uh, six nine five on a on a on a strap uh, and seven nine five on, on the bracelet. Um, so it's a very cool watch. You're very welcome to come and have a look at it um, when, when we finish having the conversation. Um, but it's it really is uh, what's to talk about. And I will just hand over to Jem so we can talk about it a little bit more. Um, so. As Guy said, um, we launched the Beachmaster Auto in three different colourways. Um, so we did the steel, the bronze, and the founder's edition, which is the brushed steel with the black bezel. Um, we, we, we find with a lot of our collection is actually is the military watch and the black cases are the things that people really enjoy. So in that understanding, that's what we've done with our quartz. Um, we've done it in three colourways. So uh, there's the blackout, 
does exactly what it says on the tin. It is the dark version. It is the ultimate stealth watch in our collection. And it's the first time we've got all black apart from a military collection. Um, so we're really excited about that. The loom on it is lovely. Um, it sort of blows a really good blue. Um, and it's just sort of that understated watch that would be on your wrist sort of throughout. Uh, next one we have in there is the Nevo. Now, for the people who know us as a brand, the Nevo is one of um, our colour dials that we use across the range. It stands for Night Invisible Varnish Offenness. So, Offenness is a place in Norfolk, and um, between World War One and World War Two, a load of boffins were given the task to find a paint colour that they could paint the underside of aircraft to stop the reflection um, of searchlights over water. It failed spectacularly. Um, there was only one. Still looks great as a dark colour. But looks great as a dark colour. So um, we fell in love with the story, and because of our military connection, we really liked that it kind of gives us a bit more to talk about. Um, so it was only a natural thing for us to do was to put it into um, the Beachmaster um, courts. Uh, again, the loom on this is um, kind of. You can see that? Um, so that will glow pretty much like that for about eight hours. And the reason we have two different colours of loom on there is for the countdown and counter yeah. timer. So the blue, the blue is your mission timer, um, and then your green is sort of just how you would tell the time normally on, a, really on an analog watch. If you wanted to and you have the inclination, you can time five separate things at the same time with this watch, which is pretty good going for an analog. And then the final one in the collection um, is the ghost. So quite unusually for us, we've gone for a light dial. Um, it's a cold sand, or cool sand. Um, and again, sort of a really nice loom in there as well. So we think, um, for me, this is my favorite out of the collection. It's really different for us from an Elliot Brown perspective. Um, I think it's quite a unique offering in everything else that we do. Um, but as a, as a group of watches, they're just beautiful. Beachmaster is the... One of the unique things about this, which is really cool, um, and, and it's, mm -hmm. it's like a fidget toy, it's, it's incredible, is that these um, compressor style designs with the internal bezel, the bezel normally, well, in all instances, goes both ways, as opposed to a unidirectional diving bezel. Uh, and normally, it's just it just goes both ways. There's no stop. That's really irritating because half the time when you look at it again, it's moved because you've got to turn your wrist and it's turned. What we've done is created it. It moves on ceramic ball bearings, so it's a real click each time you turn the, the, the bezel, uh, which means that it does not move. It's it's a really um, it's a cool little thing, and you, you, once, you, once you're wearing one and I do it all the time, you sit on there on the phone and you're fiddling with the thing. And it took us about 18 months to get it right as well. Um, it's fair, pretty fair to say that our founders are pretty obsessive about getting details correct, um, and the, the inner bezel, the inner workings on that is, is a really good example. So yeah, 18 months, lots of different trials, um, and it does exactly what Guy said. The idea behind it is so it doesn't slip. It is absolutely functional for that point. If you are timing off it, you need to know that the time will stay what you've set it to. And it's incredibly easy to use. So if you think of, um, as, as Guy said, it was designed around sort of D-Day landings and those sorts of things. And the H in the inner bezel is H hour. So in the military, that is the point where you go over the top of the trench or you hit the beach um, of Sword Beach uh, in Normandy. The idea behind this is that you are allowed to see if H hour is your start point, you can count up to your start point from 12 hours. And then let's say you've landed on the beach and you have to assault a bunker two hours away. You can see using your visual cue, the GMT hand will move past H and will sit at two and you know you're at your two hour marker. Um, so you know you're on time, you've you found your objective. I used a very poor analogy. I was, I was going to say, uh, it, this is a slightly more uh, technical analysis of it than Gemma's <laughs> earlier statement, which is about using it to time the different things in a roast chicken dinner. <laughs> I mean, it would do we that. Might, we, we might use that in the marketing from now, from now on. Get your spuds right. Yeah, uh, it's, it's important. Like, yeah. It has to be crispy. But yeah, so there's lots of applications to it. Um, you can use it as a GMT hand. You can use your minutes hand to do it as well. Obviously, and it gives you sort of 12 minutes either side. Um, you can use your hour hand as well, so yeah, 
like the world is your oyster in the, in the way you, you would use this watch. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, it's worth pointing out, um, you know, why, why are we launching it here? I think, um, you know, what Dee and, and Spencer and the guys at BQ have done is, is, a, is a really interesting thing for this show. We participated with, with little to no expectation. That's not negative, we just didn't know what it was going to be like the first time around. And, and we were really, really pleasantly surprised. Um, really pleasantly surprised by the people that came. Um, lots of people who were super interested in watches, clearly, and, and people who wanted to buy, which was, is, is a nice thing. Um, but also because these guys have put such a lot of time, efforts, and, and thoughts into, into curating the way that this is shown. And I'm sure it will get better and better as, as, as we progress forward with it. But we just felt that it was a worthwhile exercise coming back, having had such a good, good result at the first show to, to launch here. It, um, it, it made perfect sense for us, which is why we're here. Yep. Thank you, guys. <laughs>
And the locks are on this one. The locks are on the door. But the amount of people who have asked us where these tiles come from and the quality of these toilets, Paul. Yeah? Yeah, it's very nice, Spencer. Yeah, you could. I wouldn't want to, but you could eat your dinner off the floor if you wanted to. But, I mean, I wouldn't advise it. There we go, and there's more mirrors. There's more mirrors. Good luck. The Tweedledum and Tweedledee, a couple of lemons. Who's the dumb and who's the D? Who's Tweedledum and who's Tweedledee?